So you wanted, I know I'm fucking up, but I know you no, could no, cut. No, no. No, so you wanted my, how I became an artist. Yeah. Cause I just did, like it's not really like a thing. I just started doing it. I've been a fan my whole life and I just started doing you it. You never did like art school? Nope. Like studying something? Nope, I'll say that. that uh -huh. That's part of the story, yeah. you know? All right, ready? It's rolling? Yeah. Okay. On the west side, highway or get high. My way hanging at the left side of a skyscraper. My name is Jason Fisher, aka Top Brahmin. Uh, I grew up in New York, and I'm just gonna say New York because basically all over New York City, Long Island, upstate, pretty much the whole state. I've been out here on the on the uh, West Coast in the Bay Area for about five years now. Uh, moved out to Oakland about a year ago. And I live now in the, the Fruitvale section, Fruitvale neighborhood of Oakland. I, I've, I've come to a place where it's like, I, I'm just kind of riding the wave, so to speak, in life and even in my work. But like, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get older. My body's gonna break down. People I love are gonna die. My cat's gonna die. Why be afraid of that? Why look at that as a, as a bad thing? It's just what is. You need death to appreciate life. You need hatred to appreciate love. You'll never, you'll never really grasp either one of them. You'll never grasp the beauty in life if you don't have any understanding of the ugly. So, I'm, tr you know, the work that I do, I'm trying to combine the two and just put that, put that notion that that's what life is. This stuff is life. This work is life. It's, yeah, I mean, you can, you, can paint a, you can paint a beautiful landscape and people are gonna appreciate it and love it and there's a place for that, you know? There's definitely a place for decorative art. But like, you know, what I'm trying to do is, is you know, uh, speak about the totality of life in a piece, like just moments, capture moments, but just the totality of life. Why focus on something that's too sad or too angry or too, you know, just filled with rage or the other side, something that's just so beautiful and so serene and so comforting. I want to find that balance of, and, and combine those two, those two things in, in one piece. I started doing graffiti in New York around 1990. Um, did it, went pretty hard at it for a bunch of years. It wasn't really that good, but I had a, a serious passion for it for a while there. And then I, I decided to, instead of using the street as my canvas, I just started taking things from the street and using them as a canvas, so to speak. Um, People are putting things out on the street, which is wonderful. You know, that's public art, it's beautiful, but I don't really see too many people taking things from the street anymore. Uh, people were doing it a lot in the 50s with abstract expressionism and Robert Rauschenberg, who's a huge influence of mine. But uh, I feel like in the day and age in which we live, where consumerism and capitalism just pushes all these products that have a very limited use or even really no use at all upon us. And then these things f find their way out into the environment. We buy so much shit that we don't need. And we just, it's just such an abundance of it that it winds up on the streets, you know? I started working with found objects simply out of necessity. I couldn't afford to buy canvas and, and good materials, so I just started working on wood and you know things I found discarded on the street. And then I, I grew to actually love using those materials because of the embedded history in them and the mystery, actually. Where did it come from? Who used it? What was it used for? And I've always been drawn to the Japanese philosophy of wabi-sabi you know, where cracks and 
rust and aging and just natural wear and tear is celebrated and looked at as beautiful instead of, you know, that needs to be fixed or painted or covered up. Um, completely self-taught. I never went to art school. Um, everything I know just came from trial and error, just messing around, figuring things out on my own. I don't have any, you know, classical technique or anything like that. I just do what I feel. And sometimes I feel like that could be a bit of a hindrance in terms of like not being able to do some of the things I want to do. But at the same time, you know, I, I really cherish that rawness that that, that brings out of me. Because it just conveys the, the passion, the need to make art without even having a lot of the, the technical training. Well, I chose the name Top Brahmin uh, be just because, uh, number one, I like the play on words. I like the sound of it, you know. But also just, um, it's coming from a place of combining the ultimate high and the ultimate low. Like the top ramen noodle, you know, that's one of the lowest foods you could eat, you know. You know, if you're if you got thirty cents or whatever it is, you can you can buy one of those and you could eat it and you know, it'll it'll do the trick. But by no means is it it's something that you you're gonna enjoy. And then Brahmin, the ultimate self, the highest nature that one can achieve, you know, and taking those two things and just smashing them together and combining them the lowest and the highest, the, the beautiful and the ugly, the rich and the poor, and just combining those things and, and, and uh, finding that, that perfect balance, that, that void, you know, that perfect zen spot where everything's just balanced. That's what I'm trying to do in the work. Just chasing after that balance. I mean, it's what I'm after in my own life, so it's going to come out in the art, you know, it only makes sense.